In this presentation, we will talk about cash receipts, internal controls. Now we're going to talk about a voucher system for the payment process, but before we get too into the voucher system, note that the systems will change depending on the type of organization and what industry we're in and how large the organization is. So if we just have a small organization, then we probably just want to have some internal controls for the owner of the company, the owner being a key component of the internal control system and having a lot more oversight over many of the things that happen. For example, for the payments that happen, we may have someone that requests something, an employee that wants to request a payment, may even you know enter the payment into the system. However, we want to make sure that the owner still has some control over such as the check signing. So remember that we would typically want to pay things by check so that we have that audit trail and we would want the owner to sign the checks so that uh, if we had a clerk or a bookkeeper that was entering the information, they couldn't make you know basically purchases for themselves that may look like business purchases or something like that. That's going to be a very typical type of fraud. So for a small company, we want to make, make payments by check, make sure that the owner has the access to the purchasing uh, information of, um, of the company and the, the owner is able then to sign the checks and that'll be a good control. Now, the owner also may want to do the bank reconciliations. They may not be entering everything into a, in a system, but if they do the bank reconciliation at the end of the month, they have a lot more, um, that's another control that can be uh, done even by small companies. And reconciling the books itself, reconciling the bank account is often a very good control over cash in and of itself. Now, when we talk about a large organization, then uh, we're going to have more components to the purchasing system. And uh, we, we, we're going to have to set up a system of controls limiting uh, different type of activities that can be involved within the purchasing process. Note that the purchasing process is a huge area where fraud can take place. Um, and it's going to be a, a, an area where fraud can happen, where, where purchases happen that are not approved or that are going uh, for personal use rather than business use. So broadly speaking, the components of the system will to be to verify what will be purchased. We want to verify the activity. We want to make sure that there's an approving process. So if there's one person that's asking or one department asking for purchases, we want to make sure that we have an approval process in place for the purchases. We want to make sure that the recording takes place and then we want to have the issuing of the checks finally. Within these components, we'll typically have some separation of duties within those components in order to uh, safeguard our assets and not have purchases that will be applied for, for example, personal use or non-needed information or, or components for the system. So a voucher system example may look something like this. For example, we might have some department re requesting for a purchase. Something needs to be purchased. A department is making a request for a purchase. We then we're going to have the form of a purchase request. So we'll have the purchase request. It's going to go to the purchasing department and the accounting department. So the, so we're going to have the purchase the purchase request go into the department of purchasing purchasing and the purchasing typically will be its own department, the only one authorized really to uh, you know approve the, the purchasing process. And then the accounting department who will ultimately uh, record the, the information into the system. And then the purchasing uh, department will then create the purchase order and the purchase order will then be going to the vendor as well as uh, re the requesting department to show that they, that they have sent it out to the, the vendor uh, receiving and accounting. So the purchase order uh, is going to go. Now remember that the purchase order is just going to be a request from the vendor to, to send it over payment has not yet been made. There's actually no transaction happening here. Uh, we're going to send the purchase order to the vendor, of course, to in order to uh, give us the, the, the item that we're requesting. Uh, we got the requesting department being the purchasing, being the requesting department up here, the, re the department that requested whatever item we are purchasing. And then we've got receiving, which could be somebody like if it was being shipped to us and we have a separate department to receive it, then we're going to give a, a copy there so that they can see the, the information or the item coming in. And then we have the accounting department, which will finally be recording this information. Then we're going to have the vendor uh, have the invoice. So the vendor is going to um, provide the invoice to us. Notice it's a little bit backwards than you might think of something like buying from Amazon, where we, we would uh, make the payment by credit card possibly before uh, we, we got the, the, the goods here. 
we're going to send the purchase order of the request and then get the vendor getting the invoice possibly at the same point in time that we receive the, uh, inf the goods that we requested. And the invoice is going to go to the accounting. So the accounting now has the uh, purchase request, the purchase order, and the invoice. And then uh, the receiving department is going to have the receiving report and that means that they got the actual whatever item was there. You can imagine the receiving department is, you know, the truck came in, we got whatever it is that we ordered. And that's gonna, the receiving report is gonna go to, and note that the receiving report now can count the information or the, the goods that has been received. And they're gonna give their receiving report to the accounting department, the requesting department, the original requester, and uh, purchasing, the purchasing department. So note the accounting department now has the purchase requisition, the purchase order, the invoice, the receiving report, and then the accounting department is going to um, invoice, have the invoice approval, and finally uh, the cashier uh, will get that, and we can record that information uh, in to the system and make the payment, the cashier then writing the check to the vendor. So this is going to be a process. You can see that it's going to be... <laughs> It, it, it involves a lot of people within the purchasing department. That allows us to make the separation of, date of, of duties. It allows us to have the verification in process. It allows us to record things uh, in a different location than the original request is happening. So also, however, you can see that it um, has a lot of, um, of added steps than a, a system where if you were a small company, you would just say uh, requesting department to check. That would be a lot faster. <laughs> and note that if, if these kind of processes aren't being followed, uh, it's very likely that people will start to tend towards that because that being the quickest point between the two activities that we want to do. But if we do that, we're, we're missing the recording. We're missing to have everything recorded the way we want. We're missing that separation of duty duties and that will increase the likelihood of fraud. So we need to review this process and make sure that we're going through this process uh, because although it takes more time and it's not as efficient as just writing a check, it does provide those other goods which we are balancing out, uh, that being the safeguarding and, and all that other stuff in comparison to a quick process. And as we grow, our goal then will be, going, will be, will be that we need to figure out what the best system of internal controls will be. It's a small system of internal control is going to work? Can we can we just have an approval process by management or by the owner? Or is it we have to have a, a larger system and as we implement that larger system, how many uh, separate separations and approval processes do we need uh, in order to have an efficient system and also have one that safeguards us against potential problems such as fraud?